Hello again. This is Hal from Light, and I want to spend a few minutes this afternoon talking about print workflow when using the Canon Print plugin associated with the Image Prograph line of printers. Now, before we get into the specifics of the printing process itself, we need to make sure that we have a master file where all of our tonal and color adjustments have been made. From that master file, we can of course save it as something different, resize, and then sharpen for the specific image content, media type, and media size. What we have here today is a picture of two eagles in Homer, Alaska that we shot earlier this year on a photo tour. I have the image sized at 12 by 18 and sharpened appropriately for a 13 by 19 piece of media and it's going to be a photo paper, a Canon satin paper for our print process today. When everything is ready to go, then we're going to start communicating with the printer itself. For that, we'll go to File and skip Print, but instead go to Export and the IPF 5100 print plugin. Now this would be the same thing for you if you had a 6100, 6200, all the way up through a 9100. Find the specific plugin, choose it, and that's what you're going to see launch here into Photoshop. The first thing I'd like you to notice about the plugin is that it is one-stop shopping. Everything we need to print from this point forward is contained in this dialog box. Now if you've ever done any printing from Photoshop, regardless of the printer manufacturer, and use the File Print option, or the Control Command P keyboard shortcut, you know that you're going to have to look at three or four different dialog boxes before you ultimately can say Print, and here this printer spool up and start to give you your image. Here, one-stop shopping. This is the only place we need to go. And even better than one-stop shopping, this print plugin has what we call sticky settings. Anything we set into any of the drop-down menus or any dialog box will stay there until we change it. That's a great thing, because once we set this up properly the first time, we don't need to make any changes again until we either change the media type or the media size. The simplicity of this interface, along with the sticky settings here at Light, have taken our misprint rate down from about 23% all the way to 2 or 3, so less than 5%. Pretty impressive. The print plugin is tab based. It starts at main and goes over to support. And in most cases, though, for regular operations, you're only going to need to use the first two main and page setup. So let's look at the main portion first. The first option is printer. And this is where you verify which printer are you about to communicate with. If you have a single printer, it's going to be easy. There won't be any choices. If you do happen to have multiple printers, then this select option will allow you to choose different printers and hit OK which to see which ones you would like. In the media type, the next option down, this is a fairly important setting for us here and that it's going to tell the printer three important pieces of information. The first thing is going to tell the printer which type of ink to use, whether it's photo or matte black ink. The second thing will be the ink density. How much of that ink is it going to use during the print process? And finally, it gives a little indication to the printer regarding the media type itself, its thickness and weight, and it's going to help with the feed process as the printing begins. The media type list here, this drop down, is populated with presets that are sent out with your Canon software. It goes all the way from plain paper down to the bottom where we see something called Special 10. These specific media types, you're going to choose one of them based upon the profile that you're using. If, for example, we look down at our output profile, they're right in the middle, the way Canon puts these together, there's something here that says FAHWP. It's fine art, heavyweight photo. We see that that is our media type that we have here. If I happen to choose a different profile, in this case a satin, we'll notice right in the middle we have an S5, which stands for Special 5. If you build your own profiles using any of the profiling software and hardware that's out there, you'll be able to choose a specific media type when you build that profile, and that's what you would select here. Now for those that aren't totally uh, intuitive, say the specials down here, remember special 1 through 5 is photo black ink, and special 5 is the highest ink density. Special 6 through 10, those are matte black ink, with special 10 being the highest ink density. What we'll use today is the special 5, talking about photo black ink, high ink density, and it's telling the printer this is just a basic photo paper which will help with the feed process. The next step down is input resolution to plugin. We always want to choose high accuracy regardless 
of what our actual input resolution is. Where do you set your resolution in the final image? Typically, using the Canon 200 or 300 pixels per inch is going to work really well for you. The input bit to plug in, the Canon printers will accept a 16-bit file, and we actually recommend using the highest gradation or 16-bit regardless of your file bit depth. Below that we have print mode and with highest gradation set we only have one option and that's for high with high precision. Next down we have the output profile. Remember that an output profile is just a map of what is possible using this specific printer and this specific media type. It gives us a gamut or a footprint of color and it helps in the color management process. Overall color management a little more in depth than we need to go today using the basic print plugin look for follow-on tutorials talking about color management. But your output profile should match your printer with a specific ink set as, as well as the media type that you're putting into it. So today I'm looking at a Canon 5100 with a premium bright photo paper satin at a 260 gram per square meter weight using a media setting of special 5 and viewing conditions of D50 or 5000 Kelvin. Whenever we make any type of modification to the color space, that is we go from our working color space to an output profile, what the printer can do, we need to have some type of algorithm, a mathematical process that will translate one to the other if they don't fit. The matching method is what does that. It's an algorithm that takes our document, in this case the eagles happen to be in ProPhoto RGB working space, and we're going to send those down to a premium bright photo paper satin 260 using the Canon 5100. That conversion process can be done one of two ways. Well it can be three ways are shown here but in most cases for digital photographers you're only going to use two. The first of those is perceptual and the second is relative colorimetric. What we recommend in most cases for a digital photographer with saturated or highly saturated color images use perceptual. If you have images that aren't quite as saturated, you can use relative color metric. There are some small gotchas with the relative color metric algorithm, and unfortunately in the plugin we don't have access to black point compensation, so in most cases, unless you've done something previously via relative color metric conversion, choose perceptual. Below that, we have a single copy, and then we can move over to page setup. Within page setup, we're going to look at the image size, which shows up at the top. Then we have a checkbox for enlarged or reduced printing. We recommend that you ignore this here and take care of all of your image sizing within Photoshop itself. The next option down is media size, and all we need to do is choose the appropriate media size that we'd like to use. In our case today, it was a 13 by 19. If the orientation of your image is incorrect once the media size has been made, no problem, just click one of the two radial buttons, either portrait or landscape, until the image looks correct. Below orientation, we have layout, and we can choose whether we'd like our image to be in the upper left, in the center, or we can move it around the specific media. For most digital photographers, we will use the center of output media size. Finally, we can choose our media source and we'll use the cassette today. The cassette is a small cassette of media that's in the bottom and the front of our Canon Image ProGraph printer, at least the 5100. If we were to use either a manual feed or roll, we could choose that here as well. Now once I have cassette, everything is good to go. On our page setup, once again, we've given media size, where the image is going, and where the media source is. Over in main, our media type, output profile, and a matching method. Once we have that, we're ready to go and can hit print. Now it's just that simple to use the Canon Image ProGraph 5100. If we need to do another print, absolutely not a problem. We'll be able to do that again very, very easily. I will actually cancel this print so as not to waste any ink or media, but thanks for your attention today. Any questions in the future on this print plugin, please give me a holler. Thanks.